Like, if I move a little bit, the focus could be off. On three, one, two, and three. Nice. On three, one, two, and three. Let me check if I'm in focus. So, when I count to three, that's when you open your eyes, okay? Correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can okay, one, two, three. Two and three. Come here. The sun's dead. Okay, posture. This will be full body pain. And then I should be switching lenses. Okay, I think this is gonna fill my pocket and switch off. Okay, I'll uh, just stay there. Swim pose, have body. And I'm gonna fire off three shots. Very good facial expression. On three. One. Okay, I'm gonna switch lenses. Yeah. You'll be happy with the pictures. Okay. And three. One. everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am comparing the Leica Noctilux F1 compared to the Voigtlander 50mm 1.1. I want to see if this lens that is 10 times expensive has pretty similar image quality or maybe better image quality versus the Voigtlander that Chris is holding. So to help me with the photo shoot today is... Chris. And Chris, uh, have you done any modeling before? Not really. So this is your first time? Yes. But I think you're doing good. Thank you. Do you like um, the photos from the back of the camera? You've been looking at it earlier. I do. It's cool. I know we're trying to go for that um, kind of emo slash dramatic look. And later on, you have um, one more outfit that we're going to change into. Maybe a third if you have time. Uh, but so far, uh, just shooting between the two lenses. I think uh, this feels a little bit heavier than the Voigtlander. Yes. yes. Um, but the screen is very crappy at the back of the Leica M9, so I can only tell which has better image quality if I go on the computer later on. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. One, two, three, good. Turn your head a little bit towards it, good. Perfect, this one there. Very good, stop your head, good, perfect, stop him. So some physical features that are different that I noticed is the Leica Noctilux is heavier. It's about 630 grams versus the Voigtlander 51.1. This is about 434 grams. Also, the filter thread of the Leica Noctilux is about 60 millimeters compared to the Voigtlander, which is about, well, which is 58 millimeters. I, sorry, millimeters, 58. And I also noticed that the focusing ring is very easy to turn, very short. Focus turning distance, short throw. And the Leica Noctilux F1, which is a version four, is a longer focus throw turn, and it's a little bit stiffer. Uh, other than that, I think maybe the foot liner looks a little bit better. But I think uh, if you don't want a heavy camera setup, you should take the Voigt Lander because it is um, lighter, especially when traveling. Uh, so we're gonna do some more shots with this outfit and then we'll change to the second outfit soon. And one more shot. 
one, two, and three. Okay, so copy same, same point. Okay, sorry. Very good, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And one more shot. So there are some similar internal features of both lenses. The Voigtlander 50 1.1 Noctin and the Leica Noculus F1 both have 10 diaphragm blades for their very smooth bokeh. And what's also interesting is they both have seven elements in the six groups. I'm looking at my phone because I'm quoting Ken Rockwell. He says that the Leica Noctilux F1 elements two and five are made of magic light glass, number 90042, which has an index of refraction of 1.9005. I believe that's the uh, time it takes the light to travel within the lenses to the um, uh, probably through the lens to the sensor on the camera body or back then um, it was filmed um, So Chris we've been shooting for about almost an hour and you're gonna change into your second outfit. How do you like the photo shoot so far? I really like the picture. Pictures are good? Yeah, really good. Do you notice any differences between both lenses? Uh, again, I know the screen is really bad at the back of the yeah, camera. Yeah, one but... lens is okay. off. The pictures are coming in a little bit darker. It's probably this one. Yeah. Uh, darker on the sides? Yeah. So this one has more vignetting. Um, so when it's shot wide open like this, uh, that's just the way the lens is designed where the light coming in is not that bright around the, the picture, the frame of the picture. But with this lens of Oilander, you notice it's, it's brighter, right? Yeah. Okay. Way brighter. That's a good observation because a lot of people do notice that with um, the Noct Deluxe. Okay, so one more outfit and then we'll keep on shooting. Yes. Other internal features of both lenses, which are very similar, is close focusing distance for both lenses is at one meter, which is 3.3 feet. The lens hood is built into the version 4 of the Noctilux. It is plastic. It is Voigtlander. I do have on a special edition lens, which you can purchase separately. I think it's worth like $100. It's a screw on um, metal hood. Um, but you do, it's a vented hood. But with the box with the Voigtlander Noctilux, you do get a regular screw in hood. This lens is made in Japan, the Voigtlander Noctilux. One and the Noctilux F1 version 4 is made in Canada. So I see uh, Chris walking back in her second outfit. Uh, we have about maybe 30 to 40 more minutes of um, daylight. So we'll continue to shoot. Because of the vented lens hood, the Voigtlander is blocking the viewfinder a little bit more. The Leica Noctilux is very hard to uh, flare. I was shooting Chris against uh, the sun here, and from looking at the pictures at the back of the M9, I didn't see any flare at all. I did have to use three stop ND filters for each lens, uh, just because it's very bright, and shooting these wide open F1s actually suck in uh, a lot of light. The Noctilux is 10 times the price on the used market. It averages about $5,000 uh, the point lantern that I have here uh, averages uh, between $500 to $550. So the Noctilux is like 10 times the price. So I just got to go home on the computer and see if the image quality increased by the Noctilux is 10 times um, the price of this point lantern. But of course, the image quality is subjective. 
Um, some people may prefer that the lane is then renders compared to the Nocton. Uh, so we have about 15 minutes left. For this instance, this is not getting shots uh, with Chris here. Um, so far, how do you like the pictures in front of the uh, this is uh, often where we start, like kind of uh, scared of. One, two, and three. So it's very shallow that the field, so your tap might be out of focus. So I have to increase the um, aperture here. We'll do one more IG story view like this. It's really nice after Cliff is done. Posture a little bit. No, that's that's me too. One, two, and three. Really dark and moody. One, two, and three. Nice, on three, one, two, and three. Couple more. Okay. So we are done with our photo shoot. Sun is setting behind us. And uh, it's hard to say which lens that I like using better. The Voilander Nocton is easier to focus in my opinion. Uh, with their short throw and smoother focusing ring. The Noctilux kind of makes the camera feel solid and heavy, like I'm shooting like with a beast, which this lens is, and as well as the Voigtlander. I just gotta go home and look at the photos on the computer to determine um, the rendering of each lens, how different it is. But I have a feeling that the Voigtlander will be sharper compared to the Noctilux, but I may prefer the out of the out-of-focus rendering of Bokeh to the Noctilux, but we'll see. Um, Chris, overall, how did you enjoy the photo shoot? I know, again, going back to the first time. I know towards the end, you kind of um, open up a little bit, and uh, we got really great shots um, with um, the, the lifeguard um, house here, and we just kind of shot around the area. We didn't go too far. Yeah. Um, you have any favorites from the shoot? Yes, I do. Uh, which is your favorite so far? It's, it's a hard um, Like, I like these. Those are nice, yeah. Shot wide open, it's hard to see your tat. So I had to stop it out a little bit, maybe F2, 2.8, just to get it in focus. But as long as um, you can read it. Even this. That's nice too. I like that one, yeah. Yeah, I think these are my favorites. Yeah, mine too. Very nice. Do you have, um, I don't think you mentioned your Instagram. Do you have an Instagram where people can follow you? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Chris Guerrero. The U is, with a, is a V. Instead. It's a V. Yes. And of course, we'll put it on the screen and in the description below so people can follow you. All right. Maybe, hopefully, in the future, you'll do one more shoot with us. Yes. Yeah. All cool. Right. Again, special thanks to Chris for helping me out. And it was kind of last minute. Um, but I really wanted to do this YouTube video just to get the information out between these two lenses because I was in the same um, situation where I don't know if I should just spend on the affordable lens versus get the one that everyone's saying that has the better blurred background and better rendering. Um, so now that I do have both before, this is still for sale, so before I sell this I just want to see if I'm making the right decision. So again, special thanks to you for helping me out. No problem. Thank you. Bye everyone.
sorry. On three, one, two, three. Three, one, two, three. One, two. Close focusing. One, two, three. Hey everyone, before we get into raw files, I just want to apologize for the bad audio. Next time, I'm not going to forget the furry windshield that goes on top of the Lark 150 wireless mic system. I did not expect Epal Beach to be super windy and pick up a lot of wind noise, but I'm going to put this on next time. So a couple of things I want to point out. Yes, the Noctilux is super expensive, $5,500. The Void Lander is $550 on the used market, both on the used market, uh, the, uh, those are the prices. Is the Noctilux worth 10 times the price? It's really what you're after. And we're gonna look at the quality of the Noctilux here, uh, right now in Lightroom, and the quality of the Void Lander in Lightroom. So it's really up to personal taste. I can't really tell you which lens uh, is better than the other, but I can tell you which uh, lens excels in which um, category. So first, I just want to point out that the Nautilux always gives a greenish bluish tint compared to the Voigtlander file that you see here. So a lot of people would say that the Voigtlander Noctilux 1.1 will give better skin tones. Uh, yes, they are true. But what I usually do now, and if you notice the Noctilux F1 is 6 bit coded, as you can see here, and the Void Lander is not, but even if I set the Void Lander manually um, for those six bit code for the Nautilux F1 and the Leica M9, the colors are still gonna end up looking like this. So what I've been doing is I go to white balance in Lightroom, set it to auto, and I'm just gonna increase exposure a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing to the Noctilux, white balance auto, as you can see, everything starts to look better and increase exposure. And I'm going to compare both of these in library mode. And I will always make the Noctilux on the left hand side. But as you can see, the Noctilux still has a slight greenish tone to the files. So now I'll be checking for sharpness. So zooming in 200%. I can tell you right away from what I'm looking at, the Nocta 1.1 is sharper and it's always going to be sharper. The Nocta Lux has like that soft, sharp look, which of course you can always do in post-process to make it look sharper, but I'm not going to touch any of these files. And it seems like a faster roll off from sharpness to autofocus with the Nocta Lux. Okay. So next two files, I'm gonna do the same thing. This is a Voigtlander file, white balance auto, increase exposure a little bit. And then we're going to look at the Noctilux, really bluish here, auto, increase exposure a little bit, and compare both in library. And from this distance, zooming in, and Chris is a little bit off. Let me unlock that for this side. Again, Noctilux on the left-hand side. You can clearly see that the Noctilux looks a little bit sharper now from this distance, but the Voigtlander clearly is more sharper. And if you look at the out-of-focus area of the grass here in the corner, compared to the Noctilux, you will see that the Noctilux seems to control the out of focus areas a bit better. You see how it's more smoother, more kind of um, smooth out in a way it's kind of like painted. And the Voigtland does have like a painterly look to it, but it's kind of rough around the edges. Very slight. Again, I'm zoomed in to 200%. Okay, next set of files I want to show you. Again, Noctilus, kind of greenish bluish. Voiliner doesn't have it. Some people, that's why uh, some people say better skin tones. So white balance would be auto here. Increase exposure. White balance would be auto here. Again, increase exposure. So I'm going to compare both of them. 
and library. Lots of stuff inside. Zooming in at this distance. Unlock this. They both seem very sharp. I do notice with my version of the Noctilux, even wide open F1, the further the subject is, the sharper it gets. So in this case, it could look like the Noctilux is sharper, but in my opinion, they're both pretty sharp. Moving to the left side of Chris, uh, these buildings in the background, background here, clearly the Noctilux is smoother. Um, than the 1.1, a little bit more uh, nervous, squiggly. And if you look at Chris's hair, and these files are raw and edited, you'll see some CA chromatic aberrations. The Nautilux may be a little bit more controlled than the Voigtlander. The Voigtlander looks like it's a little bit purplish here, but then the Nautilux has a more deeper bluish color. Pretty interesting. Okay, so the next set of files I want to show you, and of course this is the, zoom out, this is the uh, Noctilux, and these are shot in a series of F1, F1.4, starting at sharper, F2, sharper, and 2.8, which I think is the sharpest, very sharp. Please don't mind the aperture on the left hand side. Remember, there is no contacts with the lens to the Leica M body. Basically, the rangefinder just guesses the aperture, puts it in the EXIF exit data. Okay, let's look at Voigtlander now. This is shot at f1.1, very sharp. f1.4, getting a little bit sharper. F2, pretty sharp, and 2.8, very sharp. So let's compare both at 2.8. Go to library mode, unlock here, knock the lugs, we'll make it left hand side. And yeah, they're both very sharp at 2.8. The knock the lugs may be even sharper at 2.8, but I can't really count on sharpness here because any small movement uh, with me or Chris could throw off the focus, but 2.8, I think it's a good aperture and it does look like the Noctilux could be sharper. Very interesting. You can just see the bluish green tint on the Noctilux. Next is the flare test. Now these are unedited. I did not have the lens hood on for the Noctilux which again left hand side i do love the flare coming and i'm surprised i was able to get it to flare i do like the flare coming out from the not looks better this nice bluish green looking tint with the flare looks nice with the voigtlander a little bit more magenta and the flare is more controlled so it really depends what look you like okay next set of photos and these will be the last Again, both of these are unedited. Let's go to library. Again, Noctilux on the left hand side. This is shot at minimum focusing distance, 3.3 feet, which is one meter. And they're both pretty sharp in minimum focusing distance. I do prefer the way the Noctilux, Noctilux looks on the left hand side because it kind of gives like a film vibe with the greenish and bluish tint compared to the Voigtlander, which is a little bit more magenta. So like I said in the beginning of this Lightroom comparison, it's really what you want. If you want Dr. Mandler's uh, legendary Leica look that he has in a 50 uh, millimeter Noctilux F1, which, is, which has been around for like 30 plus years, and he even did the 75 millimeter 1.4 Sumalux, uh, which everyone says is like a legendary lens for portraits and uh, you don't really care about sharpness but you do care about the bokeh and the rendering you're going to get and the look and the colors you're going to get from this Noctilux F1 no other lens that I have seen in the market can replicate it then you may need to save up and get a Noctilux F1 I do notice they are increasing in price um, but when 
Cliff was done filming and we came back here and I was unloading all the video files and um, still images. I was showing him the comparisons and he said that um, himself or uh, regular people um, that don't really know anything about photography, if they look at both of the photos, they won't be able to tell a difference. They're, they're not going to be pixel peeping. The bouquet to them, just like right here, I can zoom in right now. Um, bouquet, bouquet looks very similar, except I can tell the Noctilux is a little bit more larger for the shallower depth of field, but um, people, when they look at the photo, they're not going to know it's, it's not shot by a $5,500 Noctilux. They won't even know it's shot by a $550 lens. So if that's something that you want to get, maybe like 80%, 85% the look of the Noctilux F1, and people can't really tell the, the difference uh, to their eyes, uh, then save a lot of money and get the Voigtlander. It is sharper at 1.1, and the bokeh is, in my opinion, very close. Very close to Noctilux, but of course, a little bit more rough around the edges. Uh, but there are some people with good eyes that can see the photo and they can tell right away just based on the bokeh and the way it looks that has been shot by a Noctilux F1. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Guam Photography. If you haven't, please subscribe.